Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today we'll be reviewing a video over on the channel TCG. I'm not really sure how to say the rest of their name. I think it's like RG6WY or something like that. But they've been releasing gameplay footage for the LP08 meta. And I can tell you right now, <clears throat> it's looking pretty spicy. Not going to fake it. It's it's looking really, really good. I'm, I'm fairly certain Law is going to get banned after this format from the footage that we're going to go see here today. But, um... Like I said, go check these guys out. Uh, they've got some really good content. They've got some really good stuff for the LPO8 meta. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work, I can see, uh, providing things for the community. So, again, go get check out those guys. Uh, they've got some really great videos. But um, enough of me blabbling. Let's go and get into this uh, video. So, um, first off, we have uh, RP Law versus uh, Purple Yellow Pudding. I'm going to go ahead and put the card effects on screen so that you know what these guys do, so that you're just a little bit more aware of what you're going to be going into coming into the OP08 meta. But uh, I believe Pudding's effect is when attacking, uh, she can go ahead and flip her top two life to get her uh, an additional dime. And RP Law's effect, you know that uh, he can bottom deck any creature with 3,000 or less and then play a creature of cost four or less from the hand. So <clears throat> right now we see the RP Law player play a Miss All Sunday in ramp one. And <clears throat> I believe he just passes turn here and you're about to see why because in op08 this move that he just plays with this missile sunday becomes insanely powerful and you're about to see why zoro joro is so incredible in the deck uh because the play that's coming up here is actually uh pretty pretty impressive spoiler alert i've already seen it but um again if you guys haven't seen these video footage just go check out these guys so he's ramped up to seven don he plays a seven don big mom and gives his opponent a choice either he's going to give a life or lose a life he chooses to lose a life which is very very uh important when you're ever you're going against uh putting you all you mostly just want to take your life you really don't want to ever give yellow a life especially if you can afford it and because of the position that he's in uh i think he knew that as well now he goes for a five at life and <clears throat> and again guys it's always important to swing with no dawn investment because that just means that your opponent has to worry about what it is you could possibly play but he goes ahead and <clears throat> swings in with the miss off sunday and gets the Sanchi out of his life and swings again to go ahead and get the plus one dot and then swings again to go ahead and get that that um i believe that's a nami and her effect is like she discards card and chaos cost five or less but i thought this was a masterful move um on the law players part uh he was very uh cynical when he did this i think it was very good that he swung with all his creatures first which set him up for this play that you're about to see here which is to bottom deck to reduce the big mom by three thousand and then he plays the new Rayleigh card. And just Rayleigh just does a lot of work right here. It KOs the blocker and reduces the mom by, I believe, another 4,000 or 3,000 or something like that. But at any rate, it puts the big mom in range. So he just cleared that board and took him down a massive chunk of life. So his life really didn't advantage him whatsoever. I want you guys to pay attention to this. How Yellow got two triggers out of life, and they did absolutely nothing in the face of law this is why i'm saying the law is just pretty much going to get hit after opl8 because that's that's an insane insane crackback if like like the fact he was able to get rid of a big body a blocker and take two and take three life from his opponent yeah the law is just in a very very commanding position at this point and he gives up the zoro draw because again he doesn't really need the zoro draw at this point he probably could have saved it but at this point, you don't really need to. Like, you've uh, you pretty much got all your Don. He's going to be at 8 Don, I believe, for the rest of this game. And that's the thing about Law players is that once you're at a set amount of Don, if you establish a kid or anything that ramps, you're going to be at that Don for the remainder of the game. That's that's a, that's a thing about Law and what Law players need to learn is that you need to learn to not use your leader ability so early. You need to learn to start waiting at least two turns and not your initial first turn, but two turns after your first turn so that you can get that ramp, so that you can be at high Don for the remainder of the game so that you just have more options. And, and right now, th this Law player just has options he just has options and one of the scariest things sitting across from a law player is seeing that they have a lot of dawn like you're always just hopeful that they just don't have dawn but when they have eight and they're just constantly recycling that eight dawn then then you as the opponent are just it's a it's an uphill battle for you it is just an uphill there's no if ands or buts about it he plays another missile sunday to go ahead and wrap again so this is what i'm talking about he plays something 
that allowed him to ramp. So he's going to be at 8 Don again for the following turn, even though he uses leader ability. And he just got rid of another big body. Like I said, this is... Law is just... It is too strong. As a Law player, I can openly admit that, yeah, this deck is... It's too, too strong. Um... It's got a lot of it's got a lot going for it for a deck that just runs a bunch of random cards because keep in mind like none of these cards actually have an archetype that go together. You're playing um, Vin Smoke, you're playing uh, Bonique Works, you're playing Roger Pirates, you're playing Straw Hats, you're playing uh, you're just playing a bunch of cards that just go together. You know what I mean? You're playing and it all just works. Um, Trash the big Maria, a uh, black Maria from his life. It's funny how you didn't even need that card in this game. It's just one of those cards that just puts you in a more advantaged state, and it's a two K counter, so it's just just a really good card to have. Um, he swings in again with the Reju, uh, and his opponent has to discard. <clears throat> again, this purple yellow pudding player has just been on the defense of the entire time he's he's not been on any kind of aggression whatsoever he's just had to play defensive this entire game there's never been a point where he's been able to go on the offensive or be or, or have a counter strike to his opponent's board it's just really just been like oh i just need to survive i'm just trying to survive at this point once that Rayleigh came down it was just a i'm just trying to survive like i don't have any other plan but survival for the rest of this game. And that's what the law player just did to him. He just made him sort of like swing. And again, the law player is playing very, very smart. Um, except for in this last uh, few rounds here, I think he could have just uh, invested a little bit more Don and just went for it. Uh, I don't think that there was no reason for him not to do that. You know, especially seeing, um, seeing at the board state, uh, seeing as what his opponent has in his hand but he opts out into playing a queen which isn't bad because he's only got one life and the opponent has two two swingers so a high enough a high enough uh investment and there's very very big possibility he could have lost so playing the way he did was smart it was a it was a little um conservative it was very cautious uh i play this way sometimes myself just because i don't i don't want to give my opponent any kind of potential out or resources and he was just making sure that he wasn't doing that, which is very, very smart on the law player's behalf, leaving two Don up and then putting his position, his opponent in the position to where you have to do something insanely critical on this turn or else it's a wrap. And so his opponent drops a nine cost Lin Lin, nine cost Lin Lin, allowing him to, I believe, heal a life and then essentially heal his opponent as well by getting rid of a creature. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like Big Mom and Katakuri uh, in those regards. <clears throat> Pony go ahead and swings six into the Reju, which he's just trying to clear bodies because at this point there's no there's no point in trying to go into his life. You don't want to give him the kid and killer, and his board presence is is just so overwhelming that it just makes sense for him to try and get into the board instead of trying to give him to life because that the, if he was swung into life, he just gave him the two cards and it was just been game from there because um, he just you know gave him the necessarily outs he even needed. Because his opponent gives up his entire hand right here. I believe he swings. I believe that was a 9k swing into leader. And he counters out for 10. Uh, opponent has one more life. And he's just trying to decide what he wants to do right here. Now, <clears throat> in my personal opinion, uh, I would have actually went a little higher with the Rayleigh. I would have probably, because he had three cards in his hand, I would have went 11. And um, with my remaining Don, just... Uh, put those onto lead and he only had 10 in the hand so that that 10 would have got it in there um he's got three attacks uh, i guess if he didn't have enough card in hand he's playing again he was playing a little bit more conservatively uh which is fine like i understand that um if he didn't have another rusher then it wouldn't have made sense to try and go in for his life uh especially seeing as he only had what's this uh seven don did he only have seven don okay well i can understand him not going for life if he only had seven don then you know it would have just it had just been uh a little risque but he's got no one two three four five six if he pushed back three he had nine so if he would have gave rayleigh three to push him to 11 and then gave his leader the other six that'd been 11 11 yeah that uh 
that might have been game for him or might not have been, depending on, like I say, the card in his life he's about to get here. Playing this conservatively wasn't actually bad, um, <clears throat> especially because he got rid of a body. But if he was just going to get rid of a body, then he didn't really need to play this conservatively, uh, especially since he knew that he had the ability to make sure that he wasn't going to die next turn. But it's all good. This is just a fun match. Just kind of sort of exhibition, just kind of show us as the players how it is or what it is we are going to expect in the upcoming meta. And, yeah, he just tries to go in for the Rayleigh because, again, there's no sense in him trying to go in for his life. It's not going to do anything but give him cards. So he just tries to go for clearing the uh, board. And his opponent winds up giving him three 2Ks, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then he go ahead and blocks with his kid. And then he passes back to him. And I don't see any way for the putting player to come out of this. This is looking like a GG. All he has to do is just go ahead and swing seven. He's got one card in his hand and then put the rest onto Rayleigh. And that is a match. And that is the power of law. Uh, I'm going to be posting some more uh, videos from this channel. Uh, go ahead and check these guys out. They've been providing great, great content. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's it.